Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, do you have a lot of ideas like this? Is it where you have a, a sketch yeah, pad? Yeah, I've got more ideas than you know, to do time with. to implement. Yeah, yeah I think so. Um, is it something where, where, where do you come up with your best ideas? Are you on vacation? Or are you kind of just like in the middle of the night, you wake up and start drawing things down? Or um, You know, it, this is, sounds really cliche, but um, like the shower is probably like, yeah. a, you know, wake up and go to shower in the morning. And I think actually what's really happened is kind of stuff is percolated in the subconscious. Right. And it's not really occurring in the shower, but you're kind of getting the results of last night's, you know, computation, basically. Right, right. Um, and then sometimes it's, it's uh, late at night. If I can't sleep and there's something bothering me, then it'll, it'll occur then. Um, and uh, w one, one key idea for uh, a supersonic vertical takeoff and landing electric plane occurred to me at Burning Man. Um, a lot of good ideas come out of Burning Man, yeah, actually. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. <laughs> Um, so suddenly, it's a very, very creative place. Um, so, uh, so yes, yeah, that's that's it. Shower and Burning Man. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, one last question. I always ask uh, of everyone that I interview, for the new entrepreneurs that are just getting started out there, what's one piece of advice that you would always recommend uh, to an entrepreneur? Something that you've learned over the years that they can take with them in their new venture, and then something you'd completely avoid, like something that you really screwed up on that you'd never do again. Um, okay, sure. So, I think in terms of advice, I think um, it's very important to to seek out, uh, to actively seek out, um, and listen very carefully to negative feedback. Um, and this is something that people tend to avoid because mm -hmm. it's it's painful. painful yeah. Um, but but I think this is a very common mistake: is to to not actively seek out and listen to. Uh, negative feedback. Where do you do that? Do you go into forums? Um, do you go into Twitter? Like, what what are your uh, areas where you go to look for feedback on, let's say, the Tesla? Well, it's like every, everyone I talk to is. Um, in fact, when um, when friends get a product, I say, look, I d don't tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Right. Um, and and because otherwise, your friend is not going to tell you what he doesn't like. Right. This is going to say, oh, I love this and that, and 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 then and leave out the this is the stuff I don't like list mm -hmm. because he wants to be your friend. One, you know, it doesn't want to offend you. So, um, so you really need to, 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 to sort of coax negative feedback. Um, and, you should, and you know that if somebody is your, is your friend or at least not your enemy and they're giving you negative feedback, um, then they may be wrong, but it's coming from a good place. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes even your enemies give you good negative feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, uh, so I think that's important. Um, People just view like positive feedback like water off a duck's back. <laughs> That's like, you know, really underweight that and overweight negative feedback. Right. Um, and then uh, I think it's also important to reason from first principles rather than by analogy. So the normal way that we conduct our lives is we, 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 we reason by analogy. Um, it's, we're doing this because it's like something else that was done mm -hmm. or it's like what um, other people are doing. Me too but, type ideas. Yeah, it's slight well, it's, yeah, it's slight iterations take, yeah. on, on, on a theme, mm -hmm. um, and and, uh, and and it's because it, it's 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 kind of mentally easier to reason by analogy rather than from first principles. But by first principles is kind of a physics way of looking at the world, and what that really means is you kind of boil things down to the most fundamental truths, and, and say, okay, what are we sure is true, or or as sure as possible is true. And then reason up from there. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes a lot more mental energy. Um, Give but, me an example of that. Like, what's one thing that you've you've done that on that you feel has worked for you? Sure. So, um, somebody could say, um, in fact, people do, uh, that battery packs are really expensive, and that's just the way they will always be because that's the way they've been in the past. Um, you're like, well, no, that's that's pretty dumb, you know, because if <laughs> if uh, if you applied that reasoning to anything new. That ha then you, you wouldn't be able to, to ever get to that new thing. Right. Um, so, um, you know, it's like you can't say, oh, you know, horses, well, nobody wants a car because horses are great and we're used to them and they can eat grass and there's lots of grass all over the place and, you know, there's not like a, there's no gasoline that people can buy, so people are never going never get, never to get cars. Right. Um, but people did say that, you know. Um, and, and for batteries, they would say, oh, it's going to cost, you know, historically it's cost 
dollars per uh, six hundred dollars um, uh, per kilowatt hour, and so it's not going to be much better than that in the future. And you say, no, okay, well, what what are, what are the batteries made of? So, so first principles would be to say, okay, what are the material constituents of the batteries? Mm -hmm. What is the spot market value of the material constituents? So you can say, okay, it's got cobalt, nickel, aluminum, carbon, um, and some polymers for separation, and a steel can. So break that down in, on a material basis and say, okay, what if we bought that on the London Metal Exchange, what would each of those things cost? Like, oh, geez, uh, it's like $80 uh, 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 per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you just need to think of clever ways to take those materials and combine them into the shape of a battery cell, and you can have batteries that are much, much cheaper than anyone realizes. Is, is that your big challenge at Tesla, is, is battery? It's, it's the single biggest item, but it's, it, right now it is not, a, it is not, a, it's not any kind of obstacle to us. Mm. Um, it, it, there are a whole bunch of, of, of little issues that are kind of trivial that um, are challenges when you're making a new product because there are several thousand unique parts in the car. 90% of them are fine. 5% of them are slightly problematic. 3% or 4% are um, problematic and 1% are extremely problematic. <laughs> but you cannot ship a car that is 99% right. complete. <laughs> it's yeah. not like software you can disable functionality, but with a car, you know, you can't ship it without like a steering wheel right. or like without the back seat or something like that. You know? Yeah. 